morning. Praise the Lord. Let's go, Lord, in prayer today. Father God, we come to you in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege of being able to come to the throne room in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we pray for our nation today. We speak peace to our country. We decree and declare the United States America is a righteous nation. Cleansed and protected by the blood of Jesus, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. But whatever we do will prosper. We pray for our leaders, Lord, each one of them hearken unto you. Thank you, Lord, that give them wisdom and guidance in the Holy Spirit and from your word. And Lord, we pray for all the nation world that every nation has a gospel preached as a witness, then it should come. We thank you, Lord, for all those missionaries out there, those apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers and co laborers, Lord, they bound and work, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that every day more people are receiving Jesus Christ as Lord. And every day more believers being baptized in the Holy Spirit, speaking other tongues, being taught about who they are in Christ Jesus, and going forth in this life, we're going to reign. And Father God, I thank you, Lord, for anointing me today. That book saying, do what you have me saying, do. Thank you, Lord, for giving me other soul and ghost. And I pray for all of us, Lord, as we hear your word and hear from the Holy Ghost, we'll go forth and become doers of the word led by the Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, let's turn our Bibles here to the book of Luke. And I'm going to read some testimonies here in the gospel. And here, the first one here is in Luke chapter 5. Now, we'll start in verse 15. But so much the more the one of fame abroad of him, Jesus, and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. And he withdrew himself in the wilderness and prayed. It came to pass a certain day that he was teaching that the Pharisees and doctors of the law, sitting by which came out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord is present to heal them. And behold, men brought a bed, a man taking palsy, and sought means to bring him in the land before him. When they could not find what, what made bring what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went on the housetop and laid him down his top, uh, through the time with his counselor for Jesus. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said, Man, thy sins are forgiven thee. And the scribes and Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this which speaketh blasphemous? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered, What reason your hearts? What is it easier to say? Thy sins are forgiven thee. Say, Rise up and walk. But that you may know the Son of Man have power on earth to forgive sins, he said, In the sick of Paul's, I send you rise, take it up by couch, and go in thy house. And immediately rose up before them, took up where he laid, and departed his own house, glorified God. Now let's go over here to the Gospel of Mark. And let's start here in Mark chapter 6, and we'll begin to read here in, in verse 1. Now the scripture says here, And he, Jesus, went out from thence, came to his own country, and the disciples followed him. When Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. Many of him were astonished, saying, What's not this man these things? What wisdom is given him, that he is his mighty works wrought by his hands? Is this not the car? The son of Mary, the brother of James, and Joseph, and Judah, and Simon, are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. And Jesus said, A prophet's not without honor, but his own country, among his own kin, his own house. And he could there do no mighty work. Say, He laid his hand on a few sick folk and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief and went about the village's teaching. Now, here in Mark chapter 7, we get, let's go here starting at verse 32. And they bring unto him one that was de uh, deaf and had an impotent speech and, and besought him to uh, put his hands upon him. And he took him aside for the multitude and put his finger in his ears, and spit and touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, Jesus said, Be open. And straightway the ears were open, and a string of tongue was loose, and he spake plain. And he charged them they should tell no man, but, but the more they charged them, the more, uh, much more the, the great deal they published it. And were beyond measure, astonished, saying he had done all things well. He maketh both the deaf to hear and the dumb speak. Now here in chapter 8, beginning in verse 22, and he came to Bethesda and bring a blind man and besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of town. And when he spit on his eyes, he put his hands upon him and he asked him, saw all. And he looked up and said, I see men's trees walking. And he put his hands again upon his eyes, made him look up and restored and saw every man clearly. And he sent him away, saying, Neither go into town, neither tell it in town. And all these miracles we have here that Jesus ministered, you notice he did some things that would be unusual to maybe the casual reader of the Bible. But Jesus, you know, he would tell people to do things for a reason. So he told this man, we read there in Luke chapter 5, to get out of here and go home. Now you can kind of tell what kind of atmosphere was there. The Pharisees and Sadducees, you know, they were kind of like causing problems to healing all the time as you read through the Gospels. Almost, almost every chapter, we've got Jesus facing this persecution, opposition of his healing ministry. I mean, just countless times almost, just throughout the, the Gospels. And so you have to realize this, that, you know, there's, there's things you have to kind of change in your life. You know, you, you want to ask yourself the questions or questions have to do, you know, what do I need to change? And sometimes it's just some of the time, things that you're involved in. 
you know, it'd probably be real good for you if you just went like 90 days without watching the news. I mean, I, you know, I, I can't tell you what to do, but I never watch it. But you'll find out, you know, just through prayer, waiting on God in prayer, you'll, your life will be different. Your attitude of life will change if you don't take in worldly news. And many people get addicted to it, and they just they just have to watch it for, when they get up in the morning and have to watch when they go to bed at night. I've stayed in a lot of houses traveling, preaching, and it was just usually people turn their TV on at 5, 6 o'clock in the morning, listen to the news, and not even maybe watch it. But they just had a habit of turning on the news. Well, habits like that we need to break and interrupt. And you won't realize how much you're, you're addicted to things like that until you try to give them up. When I first got born again, um, thank God I didn't have a TV. And um, I would just take that time after work, before work, put time in word and prayer. I need to seek God about what to do. Well, one time I came home and, and I, I pulled up from my apartment, which to face the street, the ground level. And, and I, there was a light in, inside the apartment coming out. And I thought, man, what, what's going on in there? You know, no one was supposed to be there. So I went inside and someone had bought me a TV, had it turned on, and, you know, concerned that I didn't have a TV. Well, you know, I noticed I was watching TV that TV had changed. Well, TV had changed, I changed. I, I kind of lost interest in it. I'm thank God for TV. But the news is, you're, you're not going to hear the truth. And you have to realize that can really affect you and believe in God and get you worried about things. You have enough stuff going on in your life without just asking more things come in. And so what Jesus would do, he'd tell people, some people, he took some people out of town to heal them. Now think about this. Other people, he told them not to go back to town. In all those instances we read, them, those four testimonies we have, he dealt with the individual about not being around certain people. And so it will affect you about what you're around. And you want to set an atmosphere of faith in your life. Now, you know, I, I knew that, I know like three people went through this, but this one man I'm thinking about, I heard him tell a story that he had this aquarium, fish aquarium, and, and he had this several fish in there, and his favorite fish died. And so it was kind of really concerned him, and he got a hold of people that knew about aquariums and came out the house and checked it all out. And, and you know, he people to go to the doctor, they used to get medicine, and he actually thought maybe he had some medicine for the fish, or, you know, like, a, like you go to the doctor and give the injection or shot. But anyway, that he said, inquired of them, you know, what's wrong? I, just, I lost my favorite fish. And, Kind of really upset the guy. He was a very prosperous guy. And they said, well, uh, your, water's, your water's toxic. And, he, and they told him, he said, if you, don't lose, if you don't lose the rest of the fish, you need to change your water. Because you got toxics in it. Now that water that the fish is in, that's where they live. The water is their atmosphere they live in. Now you and I need to set an atmosphere of faith to keep out the toxic things that's come to our life. What, what you hear will affect you. What you think about will affect you. So we want to monitor what we think about and what we talk about. Now the man was concerned about the rest of the fish dying. He said, well, if you don't want the, the people that know about the aquariums, if you don't want the rest of the fish dying, you need to change the water. You need to, it's, it's toxic. Well, I kind of realized that when I got born again. So like I shared with you yesterday, I took my tape player everywhere. Now that's just listening to auto messages, you know, people preaching and teaching God's word. Today, you use your, use your cell phone. And listen to them. But nevertheless, then you had to have, if you're going to do this, you got to make cassette tapes. Now I need to set an atmosphere that I live in. I need to learn to control my atmosphere. So what I did is I took my tape player everywhere I went. I'm not doing this because I'm real religious or real spiritual. But I need to hear what's in here. These ministers are my mentor. They, they've been down the road. They've got experience. I don't have any experience. I just got saved. So I need to know everything that they know. And I need to get as soon as I can, get as much information I can. And so, you know... I couldn't be with them physically, so what I had to do is take their messages and put, that were on cassette tapes and listen to those all the time. And what it's doing is it's helping me. It's treating the, the atmosphere. I had. That man that had the fish, he had to treat the water because those fish atmosphere is the water. And what we want to do is we, we want to just make sure we're toxic free in our Christian life because there's doubt and unbelief. And usually the most common thing that comes to is condemnation and guilt. I mean, that, that thing will start on you as soon as you wake up in the morning. So you have to resist all that. And it takes some effort on our part. But I need to get results from God's Word. The reason I spend time in God's Word is I need to get results. And the, the, the Bible is the solution to every problem. So what I need to do is convince myself these promises are more true than what I'm faced with. The situations that you're confronted with. Problems that come to your life. And all kinds of, uh, you know, just crazy things will come. 
by creating an atmosphere, then what you're doing, you're, you're taking charge of that atmosphere. And you want to take charge of your life that you don't allow things to get in there that you can control. Now, of course, you live in this world, and there's going to be people always saying things. You can't control what people say. But you can definitely set an atmosphere that you live in. And by realizing, by taking time to feed on God's Word, this is why Jesus ministers with people. I mean, tell a person not to go home. Tell a person not to go back to town. I mean, first of all, you have all this opposition against people receiving healing. Remember there in Luke chapter 13, we've got a woman that's bowed over for 18 years and could no wise lift up herself. When Jesus saw her, he called her and said, Woman, thou art loose time for me. And he laid his hands on her, me, she's made straight and glorified God. And the rule of synagogue. Now, this is her minister. The rule of synagogue answered the day because Jesus healed the Sabbath day and said the people there are six days in which men talk for him. In the therefore come be on that Sabbath day. Now you talk this way in front of Jesus. That's how blind people become. And Jesus said, Thou hypocrite. Do you know each one of the Sabbath day looses ox, rass, stall, lead away to water, and not, not this one, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan is bound, though he's 18 years, be loosed upon the Sabbath day? Now look what kind of minister she had. Her minister wasn't thrilled she got healed. And you know, divine healing can, you know, because some people get real angry over it. I, I never realized just that my me listening to this cassette tapes, it was going to create so much persecution. All, all kinds of Christian people from different churches, they find out about you. And they make fun of those things. They persecute you. They, you know, they said, well, you know, that you're in some kind of cult or something. See, when people don't understand something, they either get offended about this or they get jealous. And you have to love everybody and just realize that they just don't. Now, I mean, my accountant and my bookkeeper didn't understand about tithing when I got born again. I mean, it just was something like that. You can't live this way. You can't make it this way. I just knew they just didn't understand what I was doing. And when you're listening to the word, you're set in an atmosphere, people aren't going to be on for that. They want you to be like them. They don't like the idea you're doing something different. And people will just say things. Can't you just be like everybody else? I don't understand why, why you have to be so different. Well, because we are different. Each one of us are different. And we're not trying to be like other people. We don't compare ourselves among people. But we compare ourselves among ourselves to see, ask myself, am I further this year than I was last year in spirit? So the word of God and grow and develop spiritually. Have I made any growth here? And we should be growing from faith to faith, and from glory to glory. We should know a lot more than the Apostle Paul did and the people know in the Gospels there and definitely the Old Testament because we're born again and we've got a complete Bible. None of those people had a complete Bible. Paul never had a complete Bible. But we have all the complete Bible. We should be growing from faith to faith and glory to glory. But people limit themselves in growth and you want to grow. The growth is going to produce you know, results in your life. And the reason so many people are not happy, they're not seeing the results. Results come from just working God's Word and spending that time in God's Word. It pays off in the, in the long run. It pays off rich dividends. We're born again, got children of God. We've been accepted by the Lord Jesus Christ. And we need to begin to see ourselves that we're the righteous of God in Christ. We're the head not to tail. I remember, you know, listening to Brother Summerall, who's one to beat the Lord, but uh, he started out as a teenager, about 17 years old, and he got... Uh, God dealt with him about preaching the gospel. And he had tuberculosis and he got healed. So he started traveling at 17 years old. And his dad went crazy when he you know, found out he was going to be a preacher. He got real mad at him. And so anyway, he had all kinds of opposition. Actually, there was no one encouraged him. So one night he got to preach in a church. And it was his sister-in-law's uh, pastor. Her husband was a pastor of the church. And, uh, and he had to go out of town or something. And so Brother Summerall stayed at their house. So he got to preach tonight. He came home back to those people where he was staying at, and he's in his bedroom. The walls were real thin, and finally the, this lady's husband came home, and he, he heard him talk, and she, he said, well, how did Lester do tonight preaching? Oh, she called her husband a name. She said, oh, he, Lester, bless the star, he, he could make a preacher for a, if he had 100 years, and Brother Summerall heard that, and he's thinking while he's laying in bed as a teenager, oh, man, I can't make it 100 years, you know. I don't know if I'll live to be 100, let alone... She said, I can't make it in 100 years. But he kept preaching and traveling and preaching. When he's 20 years old, the Lord dealt with him about reaching the world. So the last church he preached, I think, was out in California. He's going to catch a boat and start going around the world. And so he told some pastor, who was like 65 years old, Brother Summer, I was like 20. He said, I'm going to, I'm, where are you going, Brother Summer? I said, I'm, going to, I'm leaving. I'm getting a boat. I'm going to go around the world and preach the gospel. He did go to 100 countries and preach. But anyway, so... They said, he said, well, the older minister said, you, you won't make it. You'll, you'll, you know, you're, you're too young. You won't make, we'll make it and criticize and persecute you. But Brother Summerall told him, man, he's kind of brash. He said, 
Well, I tell you, if I do die, he said, you'll starve to death out there in the missionary field. He said, if I do die, I want you to just give me a little tombstone that says, here lies Lester Summerall, die trusting God. That made that pastor even matter. But anyway, Brother Summerall took off preaching the gospel. He spent so many years overseas, finally he got to be, you know, as an older man, came back to, the Lord said, come back to America. America needs to get on TV and, you know, I'm losing this country, so I need to get on TV and preach the gospel there. So he bought all his TV stations. But they told him when he came back here, you're too old. So when he started, he was too young. When he came back, he was too old. So there's always a, there's always people around you that sort of going to remind you of how old you are and how you're too young or too old. Or whatever reason the circumstance to be that you can't do it. <coughs> but you have to encourage yourself in God's Word. And you're going to do that by spending time in God's Word. Excuse me for a moment. So, Brother Somar encouraged himself, and so you have to do that. Don't wait for someone to be your motivator. You want to encourage yourself in God's Word and keep speaking God's Word, keep saying what God's Word says about you. The more you do that, the stronger you get spiritually. And all of a sudden, you get strong spiritually. So, what did Jesus do? He led these people out of town and ministered to them. There was so much unbelief in that town in Mark chapter 6 that he could do the mighty works. Not that he wouldn't. But he couldn't. Now, why couldn't he? Because of their unbelief. So what did he do about the unbelief? He went around teaching and preaching. That's the cure to it. It's hearing the word. <clears throat> the people came to hear the word of God. So they didn't come to hear Jesus saying, and thank God for saying. But we read there, they came to hear the word and be healed. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. This is why we need to stay in the word. We don't want to live on past manna. Every day, Listen to messages. You know, you got CDs today. You got your, you know, iPhone. You can listen to message constantly. Have them play in the background, even if you're not even conscious of it. It's still setting that atmosphere of faith, to charge that atmosphere of faith and unbelief. So in Jesus' hometown, there's people there that could have got healed, that would have got healed, that should have got healed. It was God's will; they'd be healed, but He couldn't get them healed. One translation said He just healed them of minor ailments. That means no leprosy or blind eyes got healed. Now, why couldn't He? I thought God could do anything. Well, he can't move when there's unbelief. Remember the Old Testament, they said they limited the God of Israel with their unbelief. And that's what unbelief does. It's what Caleb and Joshua was faced with all the time. And Caleb gave us the answer there in Joshua chapter 14. When they found, we found out why they couldn't go in the land, he said, My brother melted people's hearts. And many times Christians will try to rob you of your faith. They don't believe in healing. They don't believe in speaking in tongues. They don't believe in prosperity. I mean, you bring up something you get excited about. You hear somebody preach. You're going to jump out on this and receive what God's promise is word. And they begin to try to talk you out of it. I had no idea. People get so upset just on those little those cassette tapes I had by listening to them. But people did. And wherever you went, people say something. No, even at work, people say something about it. It was okay to have the radio on. It was okay to have worldly music on. That's okay. But see, what, by hearing someone teach the word, but again, that's my atmosphere I need to set. I need to build this atmosphere for myself. And we do that because faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. If faith could come, it could leave. So we want our faith built up. And we do that by constantly feeding on God's word, just like the natural. I mean, unless you're fasting, you eat every day, and that food's supposed to give you energy and strength, and you exercise, develop your muscles. They tell you the older you get, the more important it is to exercise, you know, if they know what they're talking about. But the point is, with God's word, we feed on meditative. And there was reasons why Jesus did what he did. People think that was harsh today. They think it would be mean-spirited to take Jesus away or take a person, Jesus would take someone away from them. Tell them not to go back to their town. Think about this. You got healed and then you're told don't go back to your town. Well, if you want to keep your healing, it would be best not to go back or don't go back home. But there's reasons for it. Because people are trying to rob you of your faith. Again, you've got to love everybody. There's no sense getting arguments over these things. But nevertheless, the truth is, feed and meditate on God's word. And listen to God's word. So those ministers out there, they've got experience. You know, the, the ones that's called of God, they've been through some things. So what they're going to do, they're going to help me out. And I knew that with those tapes. Because these people have been in ministry for years. I don't know nothing. I, I don't, at the time, I didn't know John 3.16. I just got saved. 
But by listening to them, I knew they had experience. They've been down the road. They've been through some trials. They're the ones that taught me you need to pray in tongues all the time. They're the ones that taught me you need to keep praising God and thanking God you've got it. They're the ones that taught me you need to walk in love. They're the ones that taught me what the Word of God says to do. Practice God's Word. So though I couldn't go to their meetings all the time, I want them to mentor me, to teach me from God's Word. That's someone that knows, that's got experience and knows more than we do to teach us. You don't want to just hang around people that, that just know as much as you do, that you won't grow. That'd be like playing golf with someone that you're a better golfer than they are. How would you learn from that person playing golf if they're a better golfer than you are? You, 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 uh, does worse than you are. You want to hang around someone that knows more than you do, excuse me, that know, has the game down more than you do. And if you know somebody that that's, teaches prosperity and health, then follow that ministry. They'll keep you built up in God's Word because you're going to need it. Everybody's going to need healing. There's no one in the world who will not need healing. And everybody's going to need their financial needs met. And there's, there can be some shortcuts here that we don't have to go through all the people did years ago. We don't have to go through the things Paul that went through, the early church went through, if we implement the Word of God to ourselves. God does not want us to suffer the stuff that we thought we suffered about. We, we don't suffer the things that Jesus suffered for us. We need to know that we're the righteous of God in Christ, that we're accepted by God, that Jesus is our Lord, that we're in Christ Jesus. That's what makes us valuable because we're in Christ Jesus. I saw this mop, uh, mop black pen online, that fountain pen, and uh, it's pretty cool. It was, I was looking at it there, and it's, um, it was $1,035 just for an ink pen. Now, I've got an ink pen, you know, that usually, and I don't know, maybe it costs a dollar or two. And it, I'm sure, I mean, pins, ink pins, right, right? That's the only reason you need them. Now, why in the world would you have one like this that's a dollar or two? You can buy them by the box, and yet you've got this other one that's over $1,000 plus tax and tolls. What's the difference? Well, the Mont Black pin, it's got a name on it John F. Kennedy, special edition. No, what makes that pin special? It has a name associated with it. It's not Bic. It's got Jan F. Kennedy's name on it. So that's what makes it special. Why are you special? Because you got a name on you. His name is Jesus. That's what makes you special. What makes you valuable is because you're in Christ Jesus. And that's how God sees you. He sees you as precious, as valuable. And he wants to see that you see yourself that way because of Christ. Because the blood of Jesus is qualified to receive everything God has. And that's what always, wherever you're at, and no matter what situation you're in, you're valuable. Because you're precious in God's sight. You've been cleansed and washed by the blood of Jesus. You're a new creature in Christ Jesus. You're the righteous of God in Christ. You've been born again. And when you became born again, you became a, you became a ruler and reigner in this life in Christ Jesus. And so those tapes are going to remind me who I am in Christ Jesus. Though I couldn't be with those ministers, sometimes I get to go to their seminars, they were a long ways away, but I could get the, I got their books, I got their newsletters, I got their tapes, and I listened to them, I read their newsletters, I went through what they said to do, they've got experience, I don't have any experience, they know the Bible, I don't know the Bible, but I'm going to learn this. What I've got to do is learn how to use the Word of God. So what they're going to teach me, they're going to teach me, take these promises there, and Jesse, you start speaking them, and keep the Word before your eyes, keep the Word inside your mouth. So what they're doing is showing me how to use God's Word. They know a lot more than I do, and still do, but the, prop, the situation was I didn't know anything, and that's the problem. And plus, I got all this toxic stuff that's going around me. People who are born again were telling me God does know He's healed. You never know what God will do, and all kinds of crazy things. God's in control. They couldn't give me a scripture about it, but yet at the same time, they would begin to try to you know, deflate you because you just got pumped up in God's Word. But you want to get yourself all pumped up in God's Word. You want to be different than everybody else. You want to stand out because you're a child of God. You're the righteous of God in Christ. You're the person who's got the answer. You've got Jesus attached to you. He dwells inside of you, and you're in Him. So wherever you go, you're valuable. You're a king and priest. You're an ambassador. You can do all things through Christ. You're the person who's got the answer to the world's problems. And that covenant coming out your mouth makes you a threat to everything that's bad. Satan's doing all he can to try to destroy things. So what you're going to do is you're going to stand against him. It was, the, it was Daniel that stood for his country. And that angel came out and said, I, I, I was sent 21 days ago, Daniel, in Daniel chapter 10. It took me 21 days to get through. I had to get Michael to come here and hold these people back, these demon spirits back. You see, it was that prince of Persia that was stopping, trying to stop him from praying this through. 
And you'll have these demons attached to countries. And you come up, you take authority of these demons in Jesus' name. You tell Satan, I bind you. It's the prince of power of the air that work in children of disobedience. Anybody that's ever been preached on, on radio or television or internet, they're going to run across those spirits. And those demon spirits are going to try to keep them to get that message out because of the prince of the power of the air. They're working the children of disobedience. Why do people do crazy things? That you can't understand why they don't believe the gospel because they're blind. They don't see. The God's world blinds the minds of them which believe the law. Least light of the glorious gospel of Christ shine, to shine on them. You can't understand why they don't see it. Well, they're blind. A blind person can't see. So as we intercede and pray for people, their eyes be opened up. And Satan will do everything he can to destroy you, your country, your family, your ministry, anything else. But you stand against him in Jesus' name. And this is another reason why we want to stay built up in God's word. Because we keep ourselves going and all the people around us. Your family is going to need your faith. They're going to need your finance. They're going to need your encouragement. The reason you want to prosper is you want to help your family and friends and everybody else out. And get the gospel out. And, you know, so what's a million dollars anymore today? It's nothing. And you know, the person got a million dollars, that's no security. Our security is in Christ Jesus. You know, you, people need to believe God for $20 million, $100 million. So just trying to just get by day by day and believe God for abundance in Jesus' name. And, and take the limits off of believing God and just step out. Those people around those other people we read about in Jesus, or Jesus trying to minister to them, they were in their life, they were going to affect those people. Those Pharisees, what do you think they had done that guy when he got healed off the bed? They didn't like the idea he got healed. And they were angry. Well, look at that, that lady. We didn't read about it, but I quoted to you from Luke chapter 13. Look at her pastor. Her pastor got upset. She got healed. And people, he, people get people up, healing gets people upset. And then people, you know, they, they, they get a mutiny going, you know. It's like they protest against your faith. They're like faith destroyers. Love them. Praise God for them. But don't let anything stop you from going on for God. Keep, that's where your audio tapes or CDs or iPod or whatever you got, that you got listening to God's word, that's going to help you. That's going to be your best friend because it's going to encourage you. It's going to motivate you. Those messages got to be going all the time. Thank God for YouTube and everything they got today. But you're listening to those constantly. And, you know, take a challenge. Go 90 days out listening to the news. It, it's, you're never going to hear the truth. The truth is God's word. And you take God's word and you apply it to the problem. And that's how we re, re, take authority of these things, especially toxic things of doubt and unbelief and condemnation and guilt that comes to us every day. Take heed what you listen to. You have to make change in your life to become a better person. And there'll be things you have to cut out of your life that you just can't afford to have anymore, and people are not going to understand you. They're going to, you know, they'll criticize you. But just keep loving them, praying the Spirit, praising God, and thanking God that you've got the victory in every area of your life. And anything you change, it takes a while to develop a new habit. But as you keep persistent with it, you'll eventually de develop that habit, and you'll be far better off, be much more effective to help anybody else and everybody else with God's word, with the power of God. I had a pastor going to me one time over just Philippians chapter four, verse nineteen. And claiming things and believing God. Well, I knew the brother didn't understand it. I prayed, I prayed for him today. But the point was that he got all upset about it. I said, brother, he said, well, you're, in, you're teaching selfish stuff. So I said, who'd you get saved for? Well, I got saved for me. I said, isn't that selfish? I said, I started believing God to get my needs met. But after that, I started believing God for other people to get needs met. If I don't get my needs met and get me still built up, I can't go reach the world. And I've fed a few people. But the point is, you, we, we want to realize that don't let anything stop you. Persecution is there to intimidate you, to make you look like you're wrong because you're believing God's word. You're wrong to believe God for prosperity. What about all the people starving the world? Well, you don't give up your salvation because people aren't saved. Why would you give up your prosperity because people are poor? You don't give up your health. Doctors don't give up their health to help the people sick. They do what they can to stay in good health so they can help the people sick. And as believers, we don't have to give up things to, get, to, get, to please God. God doesn't get upset because you got five cars. You're talking about someone who has streets paved with gold. How would he get something with this? But people get this worldly mentality. They feel guilty because they have something. And you go, why have the best when the other one do? Well, just have the best because it's a testimony. But look what Jesus did. I mean, think about the clothes Jesus wore. They gambled to get those clothes. He became poor that we might be rich. And you could do, what's so important about money? Well, you, could do, you have a lot more choices when you have money. And you can help a lot more people. If you have money, you can help your family, you can help your friends, you can help your church, you can help your minister, you can help people when you have money. Is money everything? Well, why would you ask that question for? Just receive what Jesus did for you and enjoy it. Don't let anybody talk you out of it. 
Just, you're going to stay encouraged if you keep encouraging yourself with God's Word. Father God, we pray today in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, for the wonderful, mighty name of Jesus. The name is above every name. We rejoice and praise your holy name. We thank you, Lord, for our salvation, deliverance, and prosperity, all that Jesus bought and paid for and freely gave to us. We thank you, Lord, for all these blessings in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Lord, we go on for Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, that Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior, and we give you all the praise and glory. Amen. Don't know if your church is open yet, but be a blessing to your church, your pastor, your ministry that you help support. Stay on top of that. They can use your help right now. Definitely help them with your prayers and finances, but when everything opens up, just take people to church. Invite people to every week that you bring someone new or some of the same person. Just keep reaching out to bring people in to help build God's kingdom. Have you received Jesus, your Lord and Savior? Let's pray this prayer if you haven't. Jesus is our Lord, and we want to receive him as our Lord. He paid the price for the whole world. Say this to me, God, I come to you to receive Jesus Christ as my Lord today. I confess in my mouth, and I believe in my heart, that he died, was raised from the dead, and I confess Jesus Christ my Lord now. Jesus, you're my Lord. I'll receive you now. Thank you, God, for saving me. Amen. Now, if you did that, find a church to go to, and you can get fed on God's Word and grow and develop spiritually. If you got a prayer request, check out our website. It's got some real cool stuff, and you join the messages in the morning, share it with someone else. Just pass that on to someone else to be blessed. Enjoy your weekend. Till next time, it's Brother Rich. We love you. We're praying for you. Remember, Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father.